joy of the Lord. The gospel as recorded by St. John, chapter 17, beginning with verse 1, you will find these words. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. All mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be as one, as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Let the church say that. Amen. The central thought today will come from verse 13, where Jesus says, Now come I to thee, these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. The fullness of God's joy. Uh, it's important for us, as we work through then, uh, this text this morning, uh, that we take a moment and go back and frame how we, we get to where we are in terms of the passage that is before us. Jesus began talking to the disciples uh, back in chapter 13 of John, uh, after they had supper, uh, he began to teach them and to uh, tell them things that which would shortly come to pass, all for the express purpose of preparing them for that which was to come. Central to the preparation then that Jesus gives to his disciples is the fact that though they're about to experience sorrow, yet it was not a permanent condition. Over and over he tells them about the importance of them understanding what must be done as a part of God's total purpose and plan of salvation. And in particular, there are two other references uh, in chapter, one in chapter 15, one in chapter 16, that connect with what we are going to highlight in chapter 17, the fullness of the joy of the Lord. Now in chapter 15, uh, verse 11, Jesus is still talking with his disciples, and he says this in chapter 15, verse 11. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your 
your joy might be full. Again, he continues talking with them. And over in chapter 16, when you get to verse number 22 down through 24, verse 22 of chapter 16. And ye, and ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man take it from you. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing, verily, verily, I say unto you whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. So, he's talking to the disciples, and twice then he tells them, I want you to have fullness of joy. Amen. Amen. Chapter 17, he shifts his attention. The disciples are still there. He's talking with them. But now he shifts his attention and begins to pray and talk to the Father. And part of what he says in his prayer unto his Father in verse 13 is that those disciples, might have the fullness of joy. Joy, again, how do we, how do we get there? So the question becomes, then how, how do we get there? We get there because as chapter 17 outlines for us, first of all, we have to know the Lord. Amen. In order to have the God joy, Amen. you got to first know the Lord. Amen. Scripture talks about this as uh, what we would call salvation. Yes. Uh, we have to be saved and justified. Yes. The work that Jesus Christ speaks of in the 17th chapter and what we're about to partake in the Lord's table outlines for us the fact that it was through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ yes. that then we have what the scripture calls peace with God. Amen. That Jesus Christ and his sacrifice satisfied the wrath of God for the penalty of sin for sinful men. Amen. Jesus died on the cross was innocent, sinless, and perfect Amen. in exchange for our sinfulness. So then the only way <laughs> to be right with God, to have peace with God, is to then accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Romans 5, and we often read that passage as a part of our sharing of the Lord's table. Romans 5 and 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. First step, know the Lord. Amen. But not only do we have peace with God, but the scripture then also says that then he gives us the peace of God. Amen. And that peace of God in the book of Philippians chapter 4 says it passes all understanding. And, and it'll keep your hearts. Yeah. It'll keep your minds. Yeah. It'll keep you. Yeah. Because you know the Lord. Yeah. We don't know where to join, y'all. Yeah. But, but, but you got to first know the Lord. Yeah. And then you got to know what it is that the Lord provides for us. Yeah. So that peace with God and the peace of God provides that path for joy unspeakable. Now, Jesus has already said in the 17th chapter, the world don't understand that. The world does not understand biblical joy. What the world calls joy is getting stuck and having a, a, a temporary euphoria with a 
stuff you get. Yeah. Because in the world, and it has always been amazing to me that those who have often have the most stuff are the least happy. Have you ever thought about it? Comparatively speaking, there are many who have a whole lot more stuff than I do. They have multiple homes, multiple vehicles, multiple money in the bank, multiple contacts in government, etc., etc., etc. By contrast, that's all I need to say. Yeah. <laughs> right on, right? And yet, those people who got all the stuff, they they find themselves often complaining, not being satisfied, wanting more when they already have a lot of. I have found that even when, relatively speaking, I don't have very much material, Amen. it don't stop me from having the joy of the Lord. I'm on my way home, y'all. People who have the true joy of the Lord, yes, sir. you never know when they really go because they don't let what they're going through cause them to disfigure their faith. They're not all the time frowning because the stock market went down and my investments aren't doing well. When you got the journey, It's 
more than just a physiological phenomenon. Joy for the believer does not imply the absence of trouble, trials, and problems. But one scholar said it this way, my troubles, my trials, and my problems, when they start to stretch me, it's just making room for some old joke. Yeah. 